The NASM assembler, like all assemblers, has a preprocessor. If you've worked with C, you are familiar with the concept of a preprocessor. It's nothing more than a streaming text editor. You include text editing commands in your code, and the preprocessor reads your code and obeys the commands. The simplest form of a macro is the one-line macro, and you can construct one with a percent sign and the word define. In the previous examples, I used the number 10 for the new line character. That could have been done with a one-line macro like this. Then you can declare a string ending with a new line and a zero using this macro instead of the number 10. The number 10 is the ASCII character line feed. It's used in Linux text files and by C to control the cursor position when displaying strings. In the Windows file system, the two character sequence, carriage return and line feed, is used, but we're dealing with C, so a simple line feed does the trick. You can define it as a macro and use it this way, or it might be more descriptive to express the new line character in hex. But that's up to you. The new line character is the same as control J, which means you could define it in two statements this way. In this example, one macro is substituted inside another, but the end result is the same. A control character is simply a regular character with the first two bits set to zero. Control J turns out to be the value 10. Because a control character is nothing more than a regular character with the first two bits forced to be zero, you could write it this way. The first line defines the macro named control as the value of three fox and an ampersand. The second line uses the hex value as a mask to clear the bits and defines the new line character as being the value 3 fox and it with the ASCII value of J, which results in control J, which is the value 10, the same as before. Only now, doing it this way, you have a control macro that can be used with any character to make it become that control character. For example, the form feed character is control L, and so it could be written this way. And there is another way you can do it. You can define this single line macro with arguments. In this macro, the parameter A is replaced by whatever argument you put in the parentheses. So defining the new line character or any control character becomes a matter of placing the quoted character inside the parentheses. You can use it this way to define the new line character or you can include it right in line. The construction of any control character becomes easy, by the way. The character can be uppercase or lowercase. Same result. You can define a macro and limit the definition of that macro to a specific block of code by using undef. For example, the value of max here is defined in the source code only from the define statement to the undef statement. You could, if you wished, redefine max as something else later without conflict. Similar to define is the assign preprocessor directive. You can use it as a one-line macro to define a numeric value. It will accept an expression, so you can use it to calculate the value. Unlike the define statement, the evaluation is done with the assigned statement only once at the point of the assigned statement. This means that you can use its own value to modify itself. The value used on an assign must be a pure constant, that is, it can't be a relocatable address or some other value that could be changed by the linker, nor can it involve the contents of a variable or a register. You can do some limited string manipulation with the preprocessor. The def string command will cause anything defined by it to be quoted. This example is the same as if it had been included on a defined statement and enclosed in quotes. The string concatenation operator will combine a number of strings into one, and it's pretty smart about doing it. 
It will change the type of quotes as necessary and include escape backslash where needed to make a valid string. You can also get the length of a string. In this example, the number 6 is assigned to length just as if it had been on an assign command. You can use a literal this way or a macro defined as a string constant. OK, I've got one more. You can extract a substring. Using the substring operator and the number 1 extracts the first character. The number always is the number specifying the first character to be selected. If no other numbers are on the line, it selects only one character this way. The optional second number specifies the number of characters to be selected. Negative numbers measure from the end of the string. Minus 1 is the end of the string. Minus 2 is 1 from the end of the string, and so on. These single line macros can be very handy, but real power comes from the multi line macros, and that's coming up.